pass from Havili was magic. The shift on for Crotty. Boom, far down you go, Quackett Smith. Me, oh my, I haven't enjoyed that. Yes, boy. Sit back, relax, put your belt on. Enjoy. Draft Rugby, the game they play online in heaven. G'day, happy new year and welcome to 2023 episode one of the Draft Rugby show, the pod they play in heaven. I'm Kagi and joined by the usual suspects in brothers Harry and Nelson Dale. Boys, um, how are we doing? A new year, lots of exciting things. Mm -hmm. Harry, I'm going to ask you first as the champion of uh, our fantasy champion in 2022. uh, How are you doing, mate? And how excited are you? The status quo was restored last year, so I'm high on confidence again. I know I seemed arrogant last year, but woo-hoo, just wait for 2023. But to be honest, I'm I'm just shocked. I haven't spoken to you since the last footy season ended. So it's uh, it's good to be here having a chat footy again. And I uh, wet my whistle last night with the pick and drive boys and can't wait to get into it. Very good. That has nothing to do with the fact that uh, you eliminated me in the grand final of our fantasy uh, comp last year. But um no, very jealous. Harry's bagged his fifth ring and is uh, like trying to make like Tom Brady this year and get onto that second hand. You know what I mean? It's kind of terrifying prospect. But um, uh, I really did want to win that, not only because I wanted to keep a 100% win record in the finals against Harry, but also so I would have one up on our other podcaster, Nelson Dale. Nels, how are you doing, mate? You um, uh, came in third uh, in the season last year. How are you doing? Yeah, mate. Uh, no, you didn't get one up on me, so you can just uh, wipe that out, out of your arsenal, mate. But yeah, no, I'm I'm, I'm doing well. I mean, it, it is good that the top three podcasters are on this podcast. Uh, the top three uh, drafters, you know, we're we're right up there. But look, uh, it's been a long time without footy. I know it's only been you know a couple of months, but it's been a long time without footy, and it's good to be talking it again. How good. And, and what a day to get back into potting with uh, rugby Twitter and social media just absolutely exploding, right? It's like, you know, we were just gearing up over the weekend, starting to do a bit of research, a bit of notes, and then booyah, we, uh, yeah, you can check out Nelson's uh, background pitch up. But um, actually, that, that does remind me, in terms of background pitches, look, you can either catch us on the video or you'll be listening to us uh, on the podcast wherever you get your podcast. But um, as of the first episode of the year, If you're joining us uh, uh, again, uh, welcome back. And uh, if this is your first time listening, welcome to the fray. But um, please get after us uh, at Draft Rugby on Twitter and uh, on YouTube. The old, uh, I think they say LCS, mate, like, comment and subscribe, uh, (laughs) which will be good. But um, so we're just going to start the year off episode one, short little pod responding to the, the news today, talking about uh, Wallabies coach Eddie Jones taking the reins. Uh, and Dave Rennie, given uh, the uh, exit stage right. So um, who wants to just rip in? I'm interested in to to jump in, like the old switcheroo. I I was sitting at work and a patient who I'd never seen before, who apparently isn't a rugby fan, walked into my room as soon as this news happened and said, did you hear the Wallabies coach was fired? And they are not a rugby fan. They did not know I was a rugby fan. And instantly, I think that, you know, shows the vibe in Australia at the moment. It is uh, it is on the news. It is getting spread left, right and centre, getting messages from people that clearly don't care about rugby, that are intrigued by what is going on. So, I mean, Eddie, it's his first day on the job and he's already all over the news. So that is something that he brings to Aussie rugby, that's for sure. He likes to make a hell of an entrance, doesn't he? You know what I mean? Doesn't matter what the scenario. But um, Harry, what are your thoughts? Oh, just... I'm so excited. I love Rennie and I feel really bad for the bloke because I think he's an exceptional coach. He's been dealt a very tough hand with the just sheer number of injuries, but it, it's obvious why the decision has been made. If you look at the results and if there's one, there's only one coach to be honest, who given his profile and where he stands in Australian rugby, if they said you can have this guy, but you've got to kick Rennie out. It's Eddie Jones. So I'm pumped, man. I can't wait to see what happens for not for, you know, if it's nothing else, because as Nelson said, he just draws headlines. The amount of messages I had today from people, anyone that hears anything about rugby messaged me today. It was outrageous. And I didn't even know what was going on because I was working. Nelson was trying to pull me away from my patient to tell me that Eddie Jones had, had become the Wallaby coach. <laughs> the excitement is already at fever pitch and we're in the middle of preseason for super rugby. So I can't wait. I can't wait to see what happens. Feel bad for Eddie. For uh, Rennie, rather, sorry, and I wish him all the best, but uh, very excited to see what Eddie Jones brings. 
think um, sure. I'm surprised I'm surprised Nels didn't just charge on in, push your patient straight off the bed, lie down, and be like, look, more important things here. Um I was pretty, pretty close to doing that to be fair. I'm like, Harry, do you need to spend time with this patient? Because I've got something you want to hear. Um, pretty much what I said with the patient in the shot. But look, I think the interesting thing out of this for me is we are all very big Rennie fans. Uh, it was Rennie's first international gig. Um, I really would have loved to see him get a Rugby World Cup and do the whole cycle and see if it pays off for him or not and, and how he was building. Um, but he did make mistakes. And, and I think throughout the back end of last season, I started to to wear a little thin on some of my excuses for, for some of the performances. And, and I mean, it was baffling what happened with Italy. And I mean, it was, it was a B team or a C team really, but it, it should have just been managed better. And I think if, if things had been managed a little bit better, despite injuries, despite other things, then, you know, maybe something could have been different in terms of the news that we were, we were getting today. But um, I think he's probably going to learn from overseeing a bit of the strength and conditioning. And it sounded like he was really pushing the players for fitness and did that, you know, in- increase the risk of some of their injuries. Uh, I think the reports were suggesting maybe, maybe they pushed things a little bit too far. Uh, and, and this is just going to be a learning experience for for him. And I, I really hope he gets another international geek because he is a really, really good coach. But the thing about, Eddie is Eddie is an international coach and he understands how it works. And it was what, I don't know, 18 years ago or something. He was last in Australia and his learnings from then are massive. He took Japan from perennial easy beats, you know, getting slaughtered week in, week out, week out to beating South Africa. He took England from not making it out of the pool to making a grand final. He is a man that can turn a team around and, and it's what we need at the moment. Yeah, fair enough. I think I think Harry nailed it on the head saying that um, I think all of us would prefer not to change a coach in a Rugby World Cup year, but if, there's probably only one bloke, one coach in the world that you would just, you know, ab- drop absolutely everything for and give him whatever he wants, and uh, and it's Eddie Jones. But um, it happened, I, and that's exactly what happened. But uh, look, I think with Rennie, uh, he's I think he'll be very unfairly judged by history. Um, we'll get into the the stats in a second, but I think it's. It's not only did, was he, you know, had the craziest year last year. We have never seen that many injuries. I forget, was it like the, I don't know, 50, 50th or like player we had to cap or well, 40th player last year or something by the end of the year. It was insane how many players, I don't think any other team has ever used that many players in one calendar year. Um, yeah. That's Don't fact check me on that. But um, but I think the, the way that Rennie goes about things, so it's certainly unluggy with that, definitely unluggy with the Italy loss. I think even playing a B team or C team, you it's inconceivable. No one ever thought we could lose to Italy, even with a D team, right? But um, but I think wh- where he's been unlucky is what Rennie's done in every team he's gone into, the Chiefs, the Glasgow Warriors, he's, he's gone in there and he's tried to rebuild it from the ground up, started with really strong cultural foundations and yep. really getting buy-in mm-hmm. and, then, and then trying a whole bunch of different players and combinations. So what he's really done has been about two or two and a half years or whatever it's been of just experiments. And now he doesn't get to... Um, see yeah, all this hard work come to fruition so he doesn't actually get to go this is what my master plan is but it's kind of the same with eddie really like england firing eddie was insane because well, you know exactly the, we know eddie insane. had a master plan you let the guy set it all up lay all his cards out he's like all right <laughs> now let's see how it works now like nah yeah. just like yeah. we don't you, really like how it, it's going but it's clear that that's what eddie does everyone knows that's what eddie <laughs> does Rennie, yeah. like you went is something coming like you felt we were getting there, but he, he wasn't really still building the cohesion late last year and not deciding on his fly half and his fullback. And I think that's where, you know, the negatives are rather than, you know, necessarily the stats. That, that's why I think he got unlucky because I think this year, if we if we didn't have the most insane injury year, it, we would have seen some better steps forward. Like if, if yep. we had our full strength squad available, I think we would have had a really positive spring tour. Um, yeah, I, I just think I've I'd seen enough I don't know, progression forward, but um, he did get very unlucky with that. But um, no, massive news for Ren, and I guess he's uh, look he's probably getting a nice, much <clears throat> much calmer uh, job over in Japan with a cushy paycheck, and he's on what do they call gardener's leave for the rest of the year. But um, no, it was interesting. I think that what I got out of kind of how it went down, and I suppose from the from the day that Eddie got fired by England. Um, it would have been absolutely everyone at Rugby Australia scrambling to, uh, you know, move mountains to to, to get Eddie in, into um, the picture. But from my understanding, um, it's 
you know, they wanted to bring Eddie in in kind of like a supervisory role, kind of like a director of rugby role this year because he wanted to come straight in, Eddie, and uh, and to work with Rennie, um, you know, in this World Cup year and then, you know, possibly look at what would happen next year. And that would be interesting for a few reasons. One is if the Wallabies did really, really well under Rennie this year in the World Cup, it's pretty hard to fire him next year. But also um, I think what Rennie did was, and I like that he stuck to his guns. He learned from Michael Checker's experience. So Michael Checker didn't get that choice. They just forced the kind of director of rugby and other decision makers in that uh, 2019 Rugby World Cup year. Uh, and Rennie went, absolutely not. I'm not working with Eddie. I'm not having someone oversee me. I'm not having someone second guess and you know override my decisions. It's either it's me or it's nothing. And unfortunately, <laughs> the, the other option was Eddie Jones <laughs> was the biggest fish in the planet. So they called his called his bluff and uh, and away he goes but yeah certainly a big decision is that how you saw it going down because that's that's kind of how i thought things unfolded yeah look uh, i think that that's how i saw it um the the most amazing part out of it is like how long had these decisions and these discussions been going on i know it wasn't that long ago that eddie was was kicked out of england but was this a reason why wise mental was left the the wallabies was there some talk about it and he goes i don't want to be under eddie i'll catch you later sort of thing um because that really seemed out of the blue um i I just don't i mean it's it's pretty well known how hard you got to work under eddie jones and he's done it he said personal reasons yeah he's probably like man i don't want to be working 80 hour weeks 100 hour weeks again i mean i I don't need He's, I he's, don't need he's... sausages sent to my house and called a silly sausage. <laughs> well, man, like, I want to, I want to maintain the hair on my head. You know what I mean? I'm not losing, I'm not losing the rest of it. It's um, but uh, yeah, it would be interesting to find out how long they'd been talking for, but um, certainly like when you, when you get the ultimatum from Rennie and Ed, cause Eddie's well, surely was like, nah, mate, I'm, I'm there this year. If you don't sign me now, I'm going elsewhere, you know? And, well, like, look, what do you say to that? I, I don't know about that. Like, I, f- I feel like Eddie had so many offers and he said the one thing he wanted was he wanted to go somewhere that he believes he can win a Rugby World Cup. And now he's, his first statement is that he thinks the Wallabies can win 2023. I, I believe there's a chance we can. We're a dark horse. We're not a likely, you know, contender. But he got offered Georgia. He got offered Japan. He got offered USA. You're not really talking contenders. Um, so I, I think he could have potentially waited around to next year if he knew there was a pathway there. But there was just so much uncertainty over these next 12 months that he's probably wanted some confirmation. And Rennie then feels like he's in, up in the air and they kind of probably just had to go one or the other. And that's that's where we ended up. Yeah, I mean, it's, hard, it's, a, it's a hard job to turn down when you think of the golden era that's coming up. Eddie Jones has just locked himself in as the coach with the Lions coming over, a home World Cup. He's got two World Cups in five years. Like, the the actual setup that he has now in front of him, I believe he's working with the Wallaroos as well, so he gets to bring yep. them into professionalism, which means, you know, their huge in- improvement that we're going to see over the next few years, which I do really believe will happen over the next four to five years or when Australia becomes a real power in women's rugby again. He's going to be at the, the, you know, the forefront of that as well. It's just such an awesome opportunity for him to leave a huge footprint in Australian rugby, more so than he already has. He's, yeah. he's going to have two home World Cups as England uh, Australian coach, yeah, the that is wild. And women's, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, um, absolutely. And the and the women's World Cup, I have to say, was an absolute spectacle. I went over to the women's rugby World Cup in New Zealand, and uh, was the I was there at that first game, the Australia playing New Zealand. What again? One of the one of the only Wallabies jerseys there, and you know how the game started as an absolute cracker. We got about three tries up. I lost my voice about ten minutes in, and all the um, the press was down taking photos of me and just the sea of black. So if we had one, I'd be on every fr- page of every front pa- uh, paper. But you know, um, you but then I just lose. had to get silence. Kind of the second half was just like, you know, did you lose your voice after ten minutes, or was that just the last time you had anything to cheer about as the as the Kiwis came roaring back? Metaphorically, back metaphorically. Well, I mean, to be to be fair, you you guys know I lose my voice about five minutes into any <laughs> rugby game, regardless. Um, but but look, can I touch on one of the biggest points and one of my favorite things? Look, I love, I've always liked Eddie Jones, but one of the, I had a real tough time with him being England coach because um, not because I thought he's a traitor. This is like, you know, professionalism. You you take a head coaching job where you get them. But just because I hated, uh, you know, England getting better at the hands of an Australian or Australians. Um, <laughs> and so now I'm so stoked that we have like all of the, bo- the possible knowledge we could possibly have on England in the foreseeable oh. in the next future years. Surely, I mean, what, what was the stat? I think under Eddie... Uh, sorry, we, we should get into that. But under Eddie, um, England has beaten Australia 
was it ten out of uh, the last eleven times we played? Mm. Yeah, How hard is that to swallow? And hopefully now let's reverse that and let's go ten out of the eleven times we beat them. You know. Well, yeah, I, mean, I will yeah, say yeah, at least four of those games were utter bullshit. Uh, some decision at Twickenham, but that's just well, let's not open yeah. that up again, or you're going to get me really hated. But um, guys, let, let's push on. I want to ask mm. who will be the biggest casualty of the Eddie Jones takeover. Well, see, this this is two parts, right? This is in in twenty twenty three. No, this twenty twenty three. I think is different to twenty twenty four. I don't think he, you know, just tears everything up. Um, in in you know a few months out from a, a World Cup, so it, it's probably going to be one of the older blokes that maybe haven't had that much experience. You know, maybe it is just someone like a Neville, or a, worst case, maybe it is someone like a Holloway if he doesn't think that's the vibe he wants at at six. But I was chatting to someone on Twitter today, and I said there's a good chance Holloway lifts under um, Eddie and that he might be the perfect role for, for six for them, and, and we see more of him from the fact that Eddie takes over. But I, I don't think it's going to be a huge raft of changes. I had a few names down. Um, Jordan? I, I haven't really thought about this, but surely I think you're right, Harry. There's going to be some. Mate, Falau there's going to be some. Falau Fanga, I reckon he's gone. See you later. Yeah, that's a Ricky all day. Call. And Lockie Lon again, seen as the future for 2027. Cool. I reckon he's absolutely gone. His throwing will not be forgiven by Eddie Jones, mm. a former hooker. So mm. I think see you later. I think he's going to be a huge casualty. Yep. Fraser McWright, I reckon for this year, for 2023, uh, 2023, I reckon they're going to say Pete Samu is a bigger body. He's playing mm. very well. He'll be the backup seven. And I think you'll see Fraser McWright need to bide his time and have to earn his spot. And Michael Hooper will obviously be the main man. So I think he's going to have a tough year ahead of him. Mm. I think Jordy Pattaya, I think his opportunity is going to be slim until he works out how to reduce his error rate, because I think that's unforgivable for someone that's as hard a taskmaster about Pattaya. And then finally, I think Bernard Foley, who's all of a sudden got yeah. this sniff, I think he's just going to be booted back out the door. I, I don't know if he's a, a, a big uh, casualty. He does not deserve to be there, and he got very, very lucky to get And he was anything. a starting flyer for the tour. <laughs> Come on, the last one. was crazy. Where, where do you actually, on that, this is this is a really good question, where do you think Quaidy fits into the equation? No, he's number, no, one. number 10. He's going to be, he's oh, maybe not number one. Sorry, that'll probably be Angus Bell or James Slipper. No, I think it'll be, I, I think you're right. I think he'll play 10, man. I think he's head, he's head, head and shoulders above. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think um, those are all good shouts, Harry, particularly Fraser McGrath. I think that's tough, but I think, look, 2027 World Cup will be his, uh, that'll be, be his, his to, to absolutely run. But um, no, I think he might be parked for this one. You're right. I think you're probably correct in pointing out that he's not going to take errors. He's just going to go, no, if you give me errors, catch you later. And that's probably going to be something that we needed for the Wallabies for a while. I also think, and like, I don't know if this is just, you know, Eddie Jones's ruthlessness, but I think he'll be ruthless in getting, in doing what he has to do to get us those players that we need on the field. And as far as I'm concerned, that means getting Samu Karevi on the field, getting Will Skelton on the field, getting uh, Cor- well, I mean, Korobedi obviously on the field, but he'll just like, whatever he has to do, and, and also that Japanese connection, you know, he'll just go over there and be like, I don't care what the contract says. They're playing for Australia in the World Cup, all right? He'll just get it done, you know? Absolutely. Which, which, I like that. Which, team, which team is he linked to over there? If, do they have any Aussies? Because he'll just send them home. <laughs> yeah. That's a That's great it. question. I'm actually, I'll, I'll, I don't know. I forget which team is. Well, he's probably linked to teams, to be honest. Ka- Ka- Kagi, I'll, I'll throw this one straight across to you. Um, yeah. Who will be the biggest beneficiary coming into this Wallaby squad? Biggest beneficiary? Like, I mean, it can be someone that's not seen as a starter that's going to be, you know, thrust into that role or someone from outside of the squad that suits how he plays, you know, a bit of mongrel coming in or something like that. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, look, I think Will Skelton, just because Eddie's yeah. been over there in, in the UK and in Europe, um, just off the top of my head, I think, to, like I have always thought, but the way Skelton's been playing the last few years, we've needed to do whatever we need to do to get him in the Wallabies side, mm-hmm. whether it's off the bench, that impact the last 30 minutes, but he just needs to be in the 23. Uh, and I think Eddie also thinks he's an extremely valuable player. So I think I think under Eddie, Will Skelton will be part of the 23, but um, that's just off the top of my head. I mean, it's easy to say maybe Marky Mark, uh, no one going to do I say, um, but that's just because off the year he's just had, you know, it would be hard to not give him a real go. But he's in a similar vein to um, Pattaya, right? It's like mistakes will not be tolerated. So he's going to have to have a really strong super season. 
I, I disagree. I disagree. I, I think, look, I actually, you're stealing the words right out of my mouth. I did prep for this question and two of my four guys were Will Skelton and Mark Nwangan and Awasi. But I think because they are clear points of difference and right. Eddie, Jones looks, Eddie Jones looks for players that can offer something different. Nwangan and Awasi's effect in the air, ability in the air, is a mm. game changer for how we can attack and the options yeah. it gives us. And as you said, Will Skelton's effectiveness in terms of his big body and how big he is in contact and how, how much he just dominates that space. Mm. I agree. I think those guys are going to go to bigger heights. You're right, I mean, Mark. He does need to get his errors low, but I think he just had such a huge step forward this year. I, I think he'll continue to. I was can just going to say, Nels, before you jump in, the happiest yeah. I have ever been watching something like in the Wallabies, I feel like in the last several years, has just been seeing Tupo and Skelton stand up at the same time to come off the bench for the last 30 minutes. Like, can you just imagine being the other team turning and looking at Tupo and Skelton coming on? Just what that does to you. You know what I mean? That's that was the yeah. greatest thing ever. I got I got one other name for you. Oh, I was gonna I... say I was gonna say Nick White, but I think he's an easy one. But I was I reckon the other one that could be a huge beneficiary is Lockie Swinton. I reckon if you're looking for the guy that he brings in just to have that really hard mm. edge, just to yep. rifle up, ruffle the feathers yeah, of the other teams, and then they'll discard him, to be honest, I think <laughs> yeah. after a year or two, because he just smokes his own <laughs> smokes his own name playing international footy. He'll do exactly what Eddie Jones wants, to just fire everyone up and make them all angry. But I think yeah. he's the exact kind of player that yeah. he could bring. If, if, we're, if we're playing the 20-minute red card rule, Eddie will be like, Lockie, get on there against in the Bledisloe one. But make sure that you fucking take out Richie Moanga or Bowden or someone important. You know what I mean? But take him out. Take out Bowden. Right. <laughs> um, look, uh, he, he'll be their lock, you know, against us in this last series, just trying to rev people up. Um, yeah. And just, yeah, he'll get under the James skin. Haskell. They'll, they'll also hate each other. Swinton and Eddie will, like, hate each other. But it'll be like the Haskell in the England squad. It'll be like, get out there and just get in everyone's face. I've got a different take on the biggest beneficiary. And it's Joseph Suwali. He loves a rugby league guy and he talks regularly about big names, bring them across, bring in eyeballs. He will say, do whatever you can to get Suwali into this, this setup. Yeah. It's not going to happen this year, but I think 2024, I'd They're be putting my money out it, now. Mate. They're already talking about it. There was an article yeah, but- I read today saying the Roosters were fretting about losing him because he's been pay- paid as a winger at the Roosters. He wants to play fullback. They already they already oh. have a fullback, so they're-, they're talking about it every month. But now they've got Eddie what's, to. What's worry the about. one? What's the one thing? What's the one position in the back line where we we actually, in the short turnaround between now and the World Cup, we could actually have a fullback. Like Joseph Zawali, just come in and be the Wallaby starting fullback of the World Cup. Mm. Yeah, he's, he's taking out his contract, he, he's, uh, he's his is. year with the Roosters this year. I, I do but, worry about having uh, Suwali, Noangan, and Owasi, and Corin Betty. That, like, if, if anyone kicks the ball to us, like, <laughs> there's no guessing how we're going to counter it. So I can kick, put it, yeah, you got him back there. It's all good. Who? Who? Pataya, he's got a big I, don't, I just said he's going to be the biggest casualty of the side. I don't think that yeah. I, he's going to be anywhere near the side. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah, um, no, I think those are good uh, shouts. Um, and, yeah, I, I'd be super excited by having t- the two wingers being uh, Marky Mark and Torren Betty. I think that would just be unreal. But um, no, We've seen Torren Betty can kick now. What do you mean? He's added that, that, that uh, string to his boat. That's true. Um, um, I, I think the one, it's probably a, a wild thing to think it'll happen again, but when he came into England, he he brought in Hartley out of the English setup and made him captain for one year and just blew shit up in the England system going, I'm bringing someone completely different in. Does that happen again? Was Hartley only captain for one year? I thought he was captain for a fair while. I thought he, he might have been a couple years, but he, no, my main point was he brought him from outside the squad and brought him yeah. straight into the squad and made him captain. I, I could see him doing it with Isaac Rodder. Hmm. Well, I couldn't see him making him captain, but... Well, I was good. Why not? I mean, it is interesting. I guess we, we, <laughs> we're assuming that Michael Hooper is just made, is the captain of this World Cup, but I mean... I'm not. Oh, sorry, I'm not I'm, assuming I, that. Okay, I'm assuming that Michael Hooper is captain. I don't, I don't think he wants to be captain, but he's handed yeah. it down. I, I don't think it's an option. Otherwise, I think he probably would have taken it on. I think they're yeah. looking at Slipper and Alan Ala Alatoa probably as the two most likely. I think there's a good chance he, if you he thinks there's someone it, outside. Just make it Nick White so that he doesn't get in trouble for talking the whole World Cup to the ref, you know what I mean? Just make yeah. him captain just so he can talk. Yeah. Um, this, I think we could talk about this for a long time, but should we wrap it up? 
We should. So, so we, should, should, I mean, it was. It's actually good that we probably d- didn't actually make reference to the stats. But should should we look at them or should we just like? Yeah, you know, I'll, everyone's. I'll, yeah. G- I'll give you the stats that everyone okay. wants to know, right? So uh, England won fifty nine of his eighty one matches with England. That's seventy three percent. Did you just say England won fifty nine of his eighty one matches with England? Eighty one fifty nine. Joking, yeah, it's all good. I don't know. And uh, Rennie won 13 from his 34 with Australia. That's 38.24%. My expectation is those numbers switch now for England and Australia for the next how many games? 81 games. Yeah. And uh, what? So, oh, sure. okay. We've obviously, we've got the World Cup in the bag, 2023. Bledisloe, we're going to win that one as well. We locked that in. Um, well, look, I mean, what's what's his pass back? He's going to win the Bledisloe in the next couple of years. He's going to win a Lions, Lions tour and he's got to win the Australian Rugby World Cup. He's got a tough that's assignment. That's It'd be great to see what the Eddie effect is big. on. You, you guys are punters. It'd be great to see the Eddie effect on the odds of like the Bledisloe Cup, you know, like before and after. Like that. It'll, it'll help us. It'll help us, I reckon. Surely. But, um, yeah. All right, fellas. Well, let's let's wrap it up there, hey. It's, uh, that's our dessert for the for the week. We're just going to have it right at the front of the week before we get into our preview pods. Please tune in. In a couple of days, we're going to release our first preview pod for Super Rugby. I think we're going through the Waratahs, the Reds, and the Fijian and Drua. So uh, tune back in, and there's going to be plenty of content from Draft Rugby, the pod they play in heaven, in uh, the new future. How good. Mm-hmm.